When you think of historically bad trades in the NBA, a few come to mind. The Brooklyn Nets mortgaging their future for a past prime Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce, sending the Boston Celtics virtually all of their future draft capital, which would eventually turn into Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and even Kyrie Irving after the Celtics would use one of those picks from the Nets to package in a trade deal to the Cavs to land Kyrie, or maybe that trade that could have changed the Hornets franchise and their fortunes around had they not moved Kobe Bryant on draft night for Vladi Divac, or perhaps the Sonics trading Scotty Pippen on drafting it as well, among other hosts of horrible trades throughout NBA history that would define the trajectory of the franchises who benefited from the transactions and those who set them back for decades. And while we can never truly know just how bad a given trade was until years after the transaction occurred to see how each team fared in the deal, one thing is certain is that a trade that was made just a few years ago in the summer of 2019 is shaping out to be one of those all-time historically bad trades, one that will position a small market team up for success for years to come and another large market team, a big spending team, setting them back for the foreseeable future. And yes, I'm talking about the Paul George trade that would send him to the LA Clippers in one of the biggest hauls in recent NBA history. As always, if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe to help the channel grow, and in return I'll be providing more NBA content like this. Now, after the OKC Thunder lost Kevin Durant in what would be one of the weakest free agency moves in the league where he would go to a 73-win Golden State Warriors team for some easy rings, the Thunder didn't give up on their hopes to still compete for an NBA title. And as such, they would make a blockbuster trade with the Indiana Pacers to acquire star Paul George for Victor Oladipo and DeMontis Sabonis, pairing Paul George with the reigning MVP at the time in Russell Westbrook. And Paul George would even go on to re-sign with the Thunder after most suspected he would leave in free agency when the Thunder were unable to get past the first round of the playoffs and go to LA, back to the area where he grew up. But Paul George would announce to Thunder fans at a party with Westbrook that he was staying. Until that is, the Thunder got sent home packing by Damian Lillard's cold long-range three in Paul George's face in Game 5. And at that point, George said, eh, maybe I should have gone to LA. And thus, George would work with the Thunder's front office and make a push for him to be traded to LA, a destination he had been rumored and wanting to go to for quite some time. And working with Kawhi Leonard for them to be able to team up together with the Clippers after Kawhi had just won his second title in his one-year stint in Toronto. But Sam Presti and the Thunder wouldn't let Paul George go easy. No, they wanted to ensure they got the requisite return for a superstar level player. A player who was coming off a season in which he was first team all defense, first team all NBA, and was a finalist for both the MVP award and defensive player of the year award. Yes, most people forget that Paul George had an insanely good season that year, the best of his career in 2018-2019. A player in the peak of his prime, they wanted the best possible return for him. And did they ever in cleaning out new owner Steve Ballmer of his franchise's future? The Clippers would send the Thunder five, yes, five first round picks, three of which were their own, two of which were Miami in a prior trade, two pick swaps, Danilo Gallinari, who was still decent at the time, by the way, but the biggest of them all, the biggest trade piece, which would go on to make this such a bad trade for the Clippers, Shea Gilgis Alexander, a player they had actually traded up in the draft to get, and after having a solid rookie season, not spectacular, but second team All-NBA, would finish sixth in the Rookie of the Year voting, but just after his first season in the league, they would move him to the Thunder in that package deal for Paul George. Now, of course, as the famous saying goes, Hindsight is 2020. No one could have predicted that SGA would go on to become the player that we now know. We obviously knew he had potential when seeing those flashes in his rookie season, but no one would have predicted he would become a future superstar in the league. An MVP candidate, perennial all-star and all-NBA player, and lead this Oklahoma City Thunder team to the best record in the Western Conference and absolutely destroying the competition thus far anyway in the playoffs. But even not knowing what Shea would ultimately become, the reason this trade was so bad for the Clippers is that they went all in to get Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, putting together this super team that was favored to win the title after the team was assembled, all but to never make it out of the Western Conference. And to see both players in and out of the lineup due to injury, and being injured at the most critical times in the postseason, and I've said before, when it comes to draft picks and the amount of draft capital the Clippers threw the Thunder's way, a lot of people will say, well, whatever, picks are picks. They're never a guarantee. Besides, when you trade first round picks for a super team, those picks are likely going to be late first rounders, so it's not really going to hurt you in the long run. Here's the problem though. When you trade so many picks for one player and just one player, especially when they're unprotected picks, what happens if things don't work out with that player? 
Or said player gets injured and you have a season like the Grizzlies just did. A team we know is a top team when they're healthy had a year riddled with injuries and are going to be at the top of the lottery in the draft this year. So what happens then? But not only that, because of the Steffian rule which restricts teams from trading consecutive first round picks, you are now limited in making future deals when you can't package first round picks in a trade to acquire more win now players, established players, to further build out your roster. Like the biggest challenge for the Clippers right now, because they're still a good team, especially when healthy, even though that's always been a big if, but they're a good team, one of the top teams in the Western Conference. But they have virtually no picks to not only use to try and add talent and build for their future, but no picks to make enticing enough moves in trade packages in a deal. The Clippers have all but one first round pick at their disposal to be able to trade, and that's in 2030. And just one second round pick also in 2030. That's it. Those are the only picks they can trade in a deal. And when you think about the fact that those picks, the picks that the Clippers traded to the Thunder, those being unprotected, the pick in 2022, the Clippers narrowly missed the playoffs after losing out in the play-in. So that ended up being a lottery pick at number 12, which the Thunder used to select Jalen Williams, who has been arguably one of the biggest steals of that draft class, especially for being a late lottery selection. Like that doesn't help that Williams has already shown a ton of promise, might be a little bit different if the Thunder had missed on that pick, but he's turned out great thus far. But more importantly, I'm looking at the unprotected pick in 2026 that the Clippers will be sending to the Thunder. Because in 2026, this could look like a very different Clippers team. One of which no longer has Paul George on the roster, maybe Kawhi Leonard, like he's still under contract, he will be under contract by then. But if Paul George walks, which some are suspecting he might if he declines his player option for next season, and if he walks, is Kawhi going to want to stick around at that point? It's also possible James Harden leaves this summer. And so you're talking about a team that could lose some of their best players while also not having draft picks to be able to add young talent. There is a world where that 2026 pick could be lottery and a very high lottery pick at that. Not only that, but the Thunder also have the Heat's pick sent to them in the Paul George trade for 2025, which is lottery protected, but then it becomes unprotected in 26. Yet another pick that could be a high lottery selection based on the fact that it's trending that the Heat could be headed into that territory if they make some pretty swift changes to their roster, including moving on from Jimmy Butler. Again, all of these picks going to a team that is already the number one seed in the Western Conference and running through the playoffs with ease. A team that is the second youngest team in the NBA, only behind the San Antonio Spurs. A team that is very well balanced. A team that is elite on both ends of the floor. A team that has a number of weapons and depth off the bench. A team that we can honestly already call a title contender, making a leap from being a play-in team last season. All of this, and they have a treasure trove of draft picks at their disposal to use in either adding more young talent or package in a potentially blockbuster trade type deal. Here's the thing. A lot of people said at the time of the trade that the Thunder got the short end of the stick in the Paul George trade because George was coming off his best season, was an MVP candidate in the peak of his prime. It wasn't like he was on the wrong side of 30 at that time. And so while the haul was nice, well, you also gave up a superstar and now you're going to start rebuilding after failing to win with one of the youngest and most talented young cores in Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. But in nearly five years since the trade, with the ascendance of SGA, Jalen Williams breaking out into a star himself, and still multiple picks coming their way from the deal in the near future, most of which are unprotected. And you see where the Thunder are now versus the Clippers, who have continued to struggle to find any semblance of consistency and success in the playoffs because of the ongoing injuries to both Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. And so when you look at this Clippers team, who have arguably the bleakest future in the NBA between them and the Phoenix Suns, knowing that they don't even really have the option to just tear it all down, rebuild, and start tanking when they don't control any of their picks until 2030, as that only benefits other teams. You realize all of that, and you see why this is a much worse trade than anything we have seen in NBA history. A trade that had positioned the Thunder well into the future with their franchise player in SGA, and for the Clippers, well, potentially a near future where they fall into obscurity and irrelevance. I would love to hear what you guys think, though. Where do you think this trade falls in terms of the worst trades in NBA history? Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.